introduce Michael Stevenson with a great delight. I had a sit-down session with him yesterday to chat over his, uh, about his work and, and project and so on. Um, Michael is in the Media Studies program, uh, the PhD program at the University of Amsterdam. Uh, his supervisor is uh, someone who's well known to us uh, here, having been here several times, including for extended stays, and that's uh, Pierre Glovink. I do not have the hard aspirated G that is required for <laughs> to pronounce that um, properly. Um, Michael is working on a dissertation project. In fact, he's in California here and has been here for several months uh, to do research on that. It's a uh, project that is about what he calls uh, web cultures, um, um, studied on a um, deeper than normal historical timeline. So what he's really interested in is the uh, extension, deflection, reflection of early cyberculture through a kind of middle phase. I just read a chapter of his on um, early blogging culture, for example, into the Web 2.0 era. Um, web culture for him in particular means uh, cultures that define themselves either subculturally or um, a phrase that he uses is post-subculturally, partly on the basis of their critical reflection on the media form itself. Um, so, it's a little bit different from, for example, a political action group that uses online technologies to form an organization. The kinds of organizations that he's interested in are those that um, use the medium itself as a reflective kind of mirror for what they actually are. Now, beyond that, and he'll have much more to say about this today, um, he's a uh, researcher interested in the uh, digital methods that one uses to conduct web cultural research the sort. So um, I think that's the focus of this uh, talk today. Just before we, I, I turn the floor over to, to Michael, maybe we could just quickly go around the table and introduce ourselves so he gets a sense of who's um, here. Um, why don't we begin here? Um, hi, I'm Dina Tan. I'm a fourth year student in the Film and Media Studies Department. Welcome. Um, I'm Anne Compton, and I'm a third year here in the English Department. Amanda Phillips, I'm a fourth year in the English department. I'm Dana Solomon, a second year in the English department. I'm Vera Tobin, I'm a postdoctoral fellow in cognitive approaches to literature here in the English department. Zach Horton, second year in English. Lindsay Thomas, also second year in English. Rita Ryan. Um, um, I actually Adam. know you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know you, Michael. Yeah. Okay, what's your name? Anneline. Anneline. And you're from Amsterdam too, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. I just completed a master's in anthropology and law, so I can see people here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what you're seeing here is a kind of a nucleus of um, many of the graduate students in the English department who are interested in new media and uh, visual studies and uh, people, a few people from other departments. And um, Vera, welcome to your first <laughs> official <laughs> English department event, I, I guess. Uh, yeah, here. this is the first so, one. Yeah. yeah. All right. Michael? Okay, thanks so much uh, for the uh, really generous introduction. I think your summary of my work is much better than I could do. But uh, one thing that I do want to correct is that Kurt Lofink is uh, not my PhD supervisor, but more like my critical conscience. All right, so that voice in my head. Um, my supervisor is, is, is actually Richard Rogers, who started the Digital Methods Initiative, and I'll talk about uh, him a little bit in a second. Um, yeah, so. so yeah, you're very right. I have kind of a split personality when it comes to research. I'm doing kind of two different things, but they do uh, come together uh, at some points. So on the one hand, the web cultural research, and on the other hand, digital methods. Um, and that's kind of what I want to talk about today. Um, but this is not so much an argument as it is kind of a sort of informal introduction to the Digital Methods Initiative. Um, and so what I've done is you can't really say it. I've organized this talk um, then kind of around, uh, well, after a brief introduction, kind of the background information on what the Digital Methods Initiative is, I want to go into uh, four areas that I think kind of distinguish uh, our work. So I'll talk about some, some of our research practices, uh, what we consider to be new objects of study, uh, research tools, and uh, some, some what I think are new questions that we're dealing with. Um, so just to start off uh, with some background information, uh, Digital Method Methods Initiative, which I'll refer to some as DMI, just to save some uh, space, uh, 
is it's a couple of years old, 2007. Uh, uh, Richard Rogers founded the, founded it together with uh, a number of. I was then I think a master's student and a couple of others uh, uh, were were there. Some programmers, some designers that he had worked with over the years. Uh, we established the Digital Methods Initiative um, in space at the University of Amsterdam. Since then, it's become a little bit more official. It's become a research program at our graduate school, at the Amsterdam School of Cultural Analysis. And we also have a, uh, an annual summer school, and that's something that I wanted to uh, maybe advertise a little bit, because if you're interested in this kind of stuff, uh, we're definitely you know, uh, we're very nice and warm and open. And we love having people over, so um, uh, if, if you're interested in, in coming over for a summer program then uh, you know, next year, then we would really like that. So keep that in the back of your mind. When you're, like, are there any stipends for the graduate students? Um, no. Sorry to say yeah. there aren't. Uh, the summer, there is no fee for the summer school, okay. so that's, um, that's at least one thing. Um, and, and I've got one couch, so. <laughs> uh, the, uh, there are... I, I've put up roughly eight to 12 participants, um, not because like, I'm a bad person and don't know, but I and don't remember, but it's uh, just because it fluctuates so much. Um, uh, we have, I think, four, yeah, we have four PhD students who are in the program, including myself, and uh, the director, Richard Rogers, um, and then a couple of others, uh, some programmers and designers, and I'll get into uh, how we work together in a minute. Um, Are they all from the university, or um... no? See, that's that's okay. that's what I'm going to mention in a minute. That that that's kind of the reason that kind of forms our work because they they you know, they can only be there for short periods of time. So so our work is project based. Uh, our, our focus is really um, uh, this. This is a line from a text by Richard. Uh, uh, our focus is on developing methods um, that that we uh, would say are specific to uh, new media and especially to the web. Um, so developing methods that account for and make use of these, these specificities. And, uh, and another way of, of kind of approaching this, of thinking about um, uh, or kind of situating uh, uh, what we do, this is another, uh, this is from a presentation uh, by Richard. <coughs> Another way is, is thinking about where it might fit within this larger movement of the digital humanities, which I mentioned in, in the abstract um, for the talk today. Uh, so, uh, in Catherine Hale's, um, her, her recent work on exploring kind of this, this broader movement of the digital humanities, uh, as well as things like the Digital Humanities Manifesto, which was written by some researchers at UCLA, um, when you read these things, uh, one of the things you notice is that, it, that the term digital humanities is, is very much a, an umbrella term uh, uh, for a number of you know, emerging uh, approaches and, and perhaps schools of thought. Um, so I, I, I'm going along with Richard in saying that you, could pro you can productively compare uh, digital methods with, uh, with some of these emerging uh, schools uh, under this banner. So, so virtual methods is um, uh, primarily associated with the work of Steve Woldar and Christine Hein. Um, Christine Hein wrote a book called uh, Virtual Ethnography. And the question in this sort of field is, is uh, how to um, tailor methods, existing methods, to you know, kind of online environments. So how does one do ethnography when part of what one, what one wants to observe occurs online. Um, another, uh, uh, yeah, more recent one is, is uh, cultural analytics, um, which is kind of based at the University of San Diego. Um, and yeah, even though their description is, is, is a little bit broader, I would, I would say that what they do primarily is um, what you could call digitized content studies. Um, so their interest uh, is what kinds of new questions, what kind of new analyses are made possible uh, by once once we have digitized some of these, uh, you know, slight, somewhat traditional uh, humanities corpora. So one of one of their uh, analyses is about uh, 
the entire collection of Mark Rothko paintings and how his style developed over time.